Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 30, the finale of the Band of Bravos. Hello, everyone. I am Jason Bullman. I'm the director of game design here at Paizo. And uh, boy, here we are, the final episode. And uh, before I go through the normal starting rigmarole of, uh, of passing it around and letting folks introduce themselves and their characters, I want to stop and take a moment to thank, first of all, all of you. Thank you very much for watching. We really have appreciated you stopping by, cheering us on, pointing out our flubs, and generally pulling for these heroes as they travel through my twisted, terrifying adventure. I also want to take a, take a moment to thank all of our players. James Jacobs, Marissa Lagerville? Lager, Lager, Lagerville? How do, Lagerville? How do you it say it? No, we're talking about right now. How do you say it? Lager, like the beer. Yeah. Okay. Lagerval. 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 There we go. Lagerval. Okay. It only we took 30 it episodes. I figured it out. <laughs> That's why we just use Marie. Solved. Just go with the alliteration, yeah. Marissa Marie. And hold your hero point stuff. We got to show you what actually people have first. Jason, Jason Keeley and Peyton Smith. The, the four of them came up with characters on the fly to join in on this crazy adventure and have done an absolutely fantastic job uh, taking part in this story. So uh, let's hear it for all of them. Thank you very much for playing. You know, it's kind of awkward when we say that because we expect it like there's people in an audience going, I want clap. And then we wait. Yeah, no, like, it's virtual and clapping. Then, yeah, it's like there's, <laughs> you know, I think there's an emote for that for people. So sure, it's sure. We'll assume there is. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, toss it around the table and let everybody introduce themselves and their characters one last time. James. We'll start with Hello, you. this is James Jacobs. I'm the creative director for Pathfinder, and I cheated. I just played a character that I've played like five times before. So, I tried to give you kudos here, James. <laughs> I know. Well, it's also a case of um, every time I play a new game or a new system or anything like that, I uh, approach it the same way. I make the, my favorite character in that system. And if I can't make my favorite character in that system, I become stroppy and despondent and and I fume and I rail and and so it, it's it's working it's good well I'm glad we could we could hook you up <laughs> it helps that I was there like poking you the whole time do this make that do that make this fair enough <laughs> hey guys I'm Marissa Marie Lagerval I'm Paisa's web content manager and I played I have played Alana Thistlefoot your halfling druid and terrible healer these last 30 episodes Hi, folks. I'm Jason Keeley, Starfinder developer. I am playing Rourke Thunderbear, the Tengu Swashbuckler. And uh, it's going to... Uh, uh, I just... I told myself I wasn't going to cry. Oh, no. If you cry, I'm going to cry. I'm Can not actually going to cry. cry. I was faking it. Haha. -ha. <laughs> <laughs> you are an actor. <laughs> you see? It's acting. And then just, I, am, uh, I am Peyton Smith. I am the social media producer here at Paizo. And I have been playing the illustrious wizard, Lorne Barnes. Exploder, Exploder and Shocking Grasp Extraordinaire. And just as Jason has said, thank you all so much for showing up. Let's go ahead and figure out who has many points. Uh, Jason, I think someone already topped you off, so you are going to be full on the villain points. Remember, everyone, just for everyone to realize that uh, what we kind of do here is that we like to have uh, these hero points on top of our portraits. And uh, chat can participate in giving us these hero points and villain points. And you'll basically see as I go through here, I think all of us basically have one while well, I'm checking. The only one has two is Marissa. So Marissa only has two and the rest of us only have one. Now, if you have points, today's the day, chat. Today's the day because this is the finale. You're probably you uh, save them for later. <laughs> yeah, if you save them for later, you probably never use them again. So it's like you probably might want to use them now. <laughs> like not now, now, but as the adventure goes, because yeah, this is the last time you'll be able to do them. So if you got points to spend, it's time to spend them. If you save so, them for the end credits, they're worth double. Yeah, what? yeah. <laughs> so I have some fifteen thousand channel points just sitting here. You can't nothing. use them. Oh. oh, you can buy me villain points. That's nice. Yeah, you can, oh. If you want me to die, Marissa, you can just spend those and then I'll just be dead. Oh, oh okay. Just okay. whenever just like, like, I will now execute Lord. And then he just... was mean to me. Jason, do the thing. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's a whole rule, all guess. I'm, I'm easy to convince. <laughs> all uh, right. 
So getting people their points here. We've explained yeah, it. How they no, work. it's like basically hero like hero points. If you've seen all through the episodes, I don't think I have to repeat myself too much. Give Jason villain points. He uses them to kill us. Hero points is a pathfinder to second edition. It's a basic game element, and they help us survive. So Jason, what do you have for us today? Well, everybody, for one last time, when we last left our intrepid band of adventurers, four heroes ventured into a mine at the behest of one good Goblin King Bright Crown. There, they ventured inside only to find the mine overrun with undead. Solving the problem uh, required them to remove something from the mine called the Elon Core, a strange green crystal that seemed to be raised, raising these dead. Bringing it back to the surface, it seemed like all was well. King Bright Crown would finally have his mine, and uh, all would be well in, in the, the small, tiny, fledgling river kingdom. However, that was not to last, as orcs deep from beneath the, underneath the ground came up and claimed the mine from below. There was some fighting, some bloodshed, a lot of misunderstanding, and the Goblin King desperately wanted a solution. Fortunately, one presented itself. You were approached by Il Noshra, one of the deep gnomes uh, who also lived in this underground ecosystem, and she offered to take you down to Kobold Town. There you might be able to meet with the orc emissary and perhaps broker some sort of peace. Thus started a lengthy journey that took our band of bravos deep beneath the surface of Galarian down to Kobold Town. They dealt with trippy deep gnomes. They were captured by the Durgar for a time. But eventually, they made their way to the town, only to find it in the middle of a celebration. As it turns out, they uh, worship a dragon, a, a mother figure um, that they uh, claim uh, unifies the town. And it was in the middle of that celebration that the Band of Bravos arrived. However, this made it very difficult for them to get into town, and they had to disguise themselves as, as uh, arena participants uh, just to get inside the gates. Um, but eventually, they were successful, even foiling a plot by some splinter cultist that believed the mother was actually a nefarious overlord. Well, from there, uh, they had a handful of misadventures in Kobold Town, dealing with a rival performing band, helping a drow uh, a refugee rescue her brother from the nefarious nearby cult. Um, Eventually, they got to meet with Gargetha Clearsight, the orc emissary, and this emissary explained that the best way to get into the orc's favor was to help them, to earn their trust. This led to more side quests as the party went to deal with the Boggards, uh, dealing with a particularly uh, sleepy guard named Frong, and uh, uh, trying to get boats from Quokka. Eventually, they managed to convince a kobold alchemist to help them get the boats they needed. Then they went off to deal with drow and cloakers. Um, the drow were forcing the cloakers into hunting only the orcs and not the drow, and as a result, the orcs could not fish on the Hungry Lake. Well, all of these things resolved, and the party finally managed to get back to Kobold Town to meet with the emissary, but in doing, upon arriving, they found that catastrophe had struck. Earthquakes were racking the town, and not soon after, the cathedral wherein hung the mother's bones exploded, and the dragon emerged. An undead menace, it flew around the town, scorching non-believers, destroying strange earthen guardians that had been wandering through town for some time, and... Uh, basically dominating the place. Kobold cultists rose from the shadows, taking over the place, in imprisoning and enslaving all those that opposed their will. The Bravos met with Golgama, the high priestess of the mother, the one who still held faith that the mother could be a symbol for hope and, and unity amongst the people of the Eternal Vault. And she said she let you in on a terrible, terrible past, a past that was buried, hidden, that the mother was indeed far more sinister than the stories she and her faithful clergy told. That the mother was, in fact, a terrifying tyrant that was put down many years ago. And in the, in the centuries since, the story has been shifted and warped, made into one that could be used to unify and not divide. However, now that the mother has returned, the terror was upon you. And it quickly became apparent that that strange Elon core that you found so long ago had something to do with it. 
You raced back to the surface, only to find that undead had emerged from the ground and were terrifying uh, the Goblin King's uh, uh, territory. You went, retrieved the core, and raced back down to Cobalt Town. Upon arriving, you found that the cultist and the dragon were ruling supreme. The, the, the outsiders had been driven from the town. Your friend Grolo, who you res rescued from uh, uh, the uh, Droskar fanatics, the Durgar, um, had been put in a cage, and you rescued him to find that Golgama and many of the other high-profile prisoners had been put into the bug pit, there to be kept until the dragon could decide what to do with them. You sprung into action, racing to the bug pits to rescue Golgama, and there you found horrifying undead kobolds and guards waiting for you. It was a fierce battle. However, in the end, the Bravos were successful, and you managed to rescue Golgama. And that is where we left off. Easy, right? <laughs> it went through a lot of garbage just to get here. We're not yeah, even level a lot 10 of stuff. yet. It, you know, it could have just been a, hey, Orcs, you want to be friends? Sure. Okay, cool. Adventure over. But it's never that simple. <laughs> no, never is. Every side quest has to take you to a long, long, arduous journey. It, makes it, it turns into the main quest. It's true. And I, I believe when we left off, we were we were here... The party had just freed uh, uh, Golgama and uh, the Muslim. high priestess um, of the Kobold faith was looking to all of you. And Most uh, importantly, uh, we saved our friend Grolo. We did. Yeah. Yes, and Grolo didn't die. <laughs> and I guess Yet. Prince Thorgrim was Yet. there as well. Oh yes, Prince Thorgrim is here. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. There he <laughs> is. Like, I, don't I don't think he is really he matters. We let out all the kobolds and they leave Prince Thorgrim in there like, no, you stay. Apparently you like this kind of thing. <laughs> He's like, I just keep getting caught. <laughs> like, then leave. <laughs> like, then go home. <laughs> then go. Then come with us, man. Like, come on. <laughs> it's like... The Golgama looks to the group of you and she says, come, we must talk. Um, and uh, if you recall, when you made your way here, there were parties of kobold cultists out from the city and they were looking for you. Um, so your time is not infinite. And uh, the high priestess uh, pulls you all aside and says, did you, did you find the core? Who has it? Uh, I think I still have it in my backpack. Yes, yes, we have it. <clears throat> that is that is good. The, the the mother will be able to sense it. I I fear we should make haste. We should get this to the earthen throne as quickly as possible. Hopefully, hopefully it can wake the founder. Just There's... tell us where it is. Yeah. Where we gotta go. It would be best if I took you there myself. Uh, it is a confusing series of caves to find your way there. It is deep within the earth. Well, all right. If we are on a time crunch, then let's go. We have no time to waste. Indeed. Um, she looks back at all of her uh, other kobolds, and she spies Kaxo uh, standing next to Thorgrim. And she, she walks up to him, and she says, Kaxo, my good friend, you must get our, our friends to safety. Uh, lead them out into the caves, lead them beyond the reach of this place. But keep watch, for if uh, the tide does turn, we shall need your help and, and the help of all of our friends. And Kaxo nods. She looks, Golgama looks back to you and says, we cannot possibly bring them all with us. It would be too obvious. We would be easily spotted. It is best that they flee into the caves directly. That's probably the best idea. So they should honestly go in any other direction than where we are going. We don't want them getting caught in the middle of everything. But time is of the essence, and we should go now. Grolo says, looks to all of you and says, Grolo will come with. I bet if you will. If you're sure, though. Grolo. Grolo needs to be with his friends. Grolo can help. Does Grolo, Grolo still have the stick? <laughs> He like, does is he stick. armed? Okay. Yeah. yeah, he's got a stick. Okay. Every time he tries to do something that's like 
You will like Grolo a lot. Grolo will make sure you feel bad when he expires. I'm just gonna go, whatever, Grolo. <laughs> just, I, I, I ain't falling for your like plot tricks. <laughs> Peyton, I've been gaming with you too long. <laughs> And I don't like it. All right. Oh, so. helped orphans <laughs> down at the beetle pit. <laughs> so, Sorry. um, Golgama, uh, uh, leads you away from this place. Meanwhile, all of the prisoners file out of here as quickly as their legs will carry them. They even pick up the cat and take it with them. Uh, and, uh, they make their way off to the caves, uh, surrounding this place because there are caves kind of all over the place that lead off to who knows where. And they quickly make for those and scatter, um, heading into the deeper parts of the Darklands, avoiding any of the patrols. The rest of you, however, make your way uh, further south. And I'm going to go back to the overall map. Go back to this one. So um, you're, you're kind of over at the bug pits, right? And uh, Golgama leads you around those. Um, back towards this back wall of the the cave here, um, leading you back into that area. She moves with kind of assured steps, as if this is a journey she has made many times over the years. She does not hesitate or falter. Other caves open and, and appear as she enters uh, these, and other passageways uh, make themselves apparent, but she passes them by, picking the right one, with kind of assured uh, ease as she leads you deeper and darker, uh, deeper and further into the dark lands. Um, the journey is not short. It takes about two or three hours as you make your way through the winding caves. But eventually you find yourself uh, in uh, kind of a deeper part of the cave structure. And you notice kind of a, a substantive difference the earth and and rock around here looks somehow different. It's it's a different type of rock instead of just kind of granite and you know limestone. Um, it's this weirder kind of dark, really dark gray rock. It might be a type of granite. You're not entirely sure, but it's striated with kind of these silver veins all throughout it that seem to glimmer in the darkness. Golgama looks back to you. We are close now. Is it a soothing sort of glimmer like you might have like a nice place to lie down and have a little bit of a rest? A little bit of a catch up on your hit points? I mean, if you, if you, if you, perhaps if you didn't have a, a terrifying uh, group of cultists and an undead dragon following you, yes, it seems just like that kind of place. Well, I'm going to take three rounds to cast three soothe spells on myself. All right. <laughs> that uh first one brings me above single digits that's good hooray <laughs> do we just want to take some time and i can cast a few heals or not cast few heals but do some medicine on everybody yeah i i should stress that although you're uh you know moving quickly that doesn't mean you can't stop for a moment to have a heal spell or a medicine check or a take bite a to eat <laughs> Take a breather. What did we decide that my new medicine check was? Was that 3d8 or 2d8 plus something? 2d8 plus 10. Marvelous. Oh, right. Yep. <clears throat> if you take, if you do the assurance. Yes, please. Yeah. I'll, I'll take one of those. All right, Rock, you are first. Nine, 19. I want one too. All right, you can have one too. 18. Hey, he got less healing than Rourke. It's unfair. Well, let's see what healing you get, Lauren. I got less, 20. too. I got less than half. That is garbage. <laughs> that's what you get. I mean, oh, I got 20. Oh, that's nice. Oh, she took it off for herself. Saving all the best bandages for yourself. I get it. Yeah. yeah. What you, you were never grateful anyway. Which one's the happy kitty band-aids, huh? Huh? You save those for you? Rango band-aids. <laughs> yeah, like Rango band-aids are like the best band-aids. Yeah, God knows I need a lot of Rango band-aids. He gets me with some frequency. Uh, um, so, uh, 
the uh, the group of you um, heal up a bit and push on. Golgama seems uh, eager to get to your destination. And um, after about another half an hour or so of journeying through these kind of deep, dark caves, there's, there's kind of a weird leaden sense to the echoes, like the echoes that leave you go but they and you get them back but they fall off very quickly um is, it's it's very unnerving is it natural or is it a hit magical um i don't know give me a nature check nature check 25 um you're you, it it could be a natural effect, but you think there might be something magical to it. The the sound here is suddenly flat. Something's not quite right. Can um, I follow it up with a detect magic? Sure. Um, so um, at your level, um, you do get a a kind of a strange uh sense. Um, this. There is definitely a magical aura around you of like conjuration magic. Um, and it occurs to you that the boundaries between planes, the boundaries between realities must be thin here. And that must be somehow involved. There is something about this place that is otherworldly. Um, and sound doesn't quite function the same way here. Oh, that's that's a, I, I explain what I'm sensing and what I'm feeling, and that's a little concerning. But hopefully, it means we're going the right direction. Golgama says, "Yes, worry not. This place is strong with the powers of the earth and the and the world. They are in supremacy here. We should we should go. the f the The earthen throne is not far." And indeed, yeah. after another few moments of walking, you find yourself uh, gazing into a large chamber. Uh, before you are four large crystal pillars sticking up out of the ground. Um, and they, although they don't quite reach the ceiling, each one does kind of glow with a uh, the, the glow kind of intensifies and fades almost at the pace of a very slow heart um, oh. just all four of them slowly glow and fade and they lead to a, a set of natural stairs that make their way up to a rather odd sight it almost looks like a, a sculptor in time immemorial took a giant block of the rock of this place and attempted to make a sculpture, a sculpture of a, of a throne with a figure seated upon it. But the figure was the thing they did not finish. The throne beneath it looks polished and well-made, although clearly it is cracked and eroded with age. It once, at one point in time, must have had incredibly crisp, even lines. But the figure sitting in the throne almost looks like a bulbous mass of molten rock. Uh, and it is just sitting there, dormant. Does it look like any of the guardians we've come across? Um, there is a similarity, actually. They do have some kind of similar appearances, but none of them were this big. This thing must be 15 to 20 feet tall. Oh my, is there any writing? In who understood? Lauren, you understand the writing, right? I guess. I am a wizard. You are a wizard. Is there I, any uh, writing or anything? There is, there is no, there is no Terran or anything written here. Um, and if there is anything on the throne, it's kind of obscured by the figure that is sitting on it. Um, Golgama looks to the group of you and says, this is the throne. This is the founder. Sleeping forever since that fateful battle. The founder has never spoken to us. Not since then. Rock, show, show the founder the thing, I guess. Yeah, let's wake him up. Hey, sleepy bones. Let's go. I'll, wait, I'll wait. take the core out. Mm, what? If he's made of rock, does he have bones? Ah, uh, sleepy stones. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> wake up. 
you get out the stone and uh as you get out the the core um you realize that the cage around it has just corroded away to nothing in your journey um it literally what what's left of the cage that grisfell made has just corroded away to just nubs of rusted rotted metal and they just fall away leaving only the core and as you present it to the earthen throne the crystals that are in this chamber the pulsing um it begins to speed up hey rock let's not touch that i want to use the amulet that i got way 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 long ago and i want to cast mage hand on the core but rock's not touching it um, well, the core is pretty heavy. Um, I mean, I don't know if it's been shrinking could... this entire time. Just enough. The that is it, true. Actually, it is. It has been growing smaller, and and now it's. To be honest, it's only about this big now. It's it's you know the size yeah. of a loaf of bread, and your mage hand is just barely able to hold it up, and, um, as it kind of floats and hovers there, there is silence the pulsing continues to speed up and after a moment there is a small plume of dust that falls off the shoulder of this slouched melted form and then suddenly it moves in fact it's not an unfinished sculpture it is the founder the founder is this large kind of blob of rock this massive giant form carved from the same ancient elemental stone that makes up the walls of this place and there is a rumbling that kind of sounds almost like a sigh like a yawn kind of a but it, but as if rocks falling were making the sound or trying to approximate them is he is he looking at his, his hands at some point and said these hands no no <laughs> not quite <laughs> i um i try i, I speak in earth and adam and going like 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 the god has been released and distracted and his reign throughout the under under dark areas I need you. We request your aid. Kind of deal. The voice that rumbles forth from this thing, um, each of you hears in the the tongue of your childhood. It speaks in all tongues at once. And it says, I knew this day would come. Why have you brought this doom upon us? We didn't mean to. Golgama, by the way, has fallen to her knees and is uh, 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 dropping and obeisancing herself and <laughs> bowing Damn. to it. It was kind of an accident. We thought we were helping. I, I, I try to translate for the group whenever they talk, and I'm just like, we didn't mean to for this we thought we were sending it more away it seemed to be too vulnerable for anyone to grab and we thought we were sealing it and taking care of it but it seems we have erred and we are looking for advice and a solution to either quell this thing or to contain it once more the founder holds up his hand and the crystal floats to his outstretched arm as he releases it from the throne a poof of kind of dust and old rock falls away and you can now see that the throne is much more intact where it was sitting than the spots that have been exposed it has been sitting here that long and the the core floats over to its outstretched fingers and for you it was like this big but for this creature it fits between its index and thumb and uh it looks at the small thing. It was such a dream. 
ruined by my hubris, marred with my regret. It looks down. I am ashamed that this day has come. Did did he make the stone? He looks at you. No, child of the stars. No. I was a servant of a great keeper. One who dreamed of the power of the builders. My master failed in his goal. But from his failure, a great spire of emerald was made. I was but a young stone in those days, dreaming of such power. I took a piece of that spire, hoping that I might be able to nurture it, that I might be able to bring life to a place, and there live in a dream. How I was mistaken. Rook I is brought, writing all this down. I brought the stuff. shard of the <laughs> spire here to this vault, to this place, and I nourished life. But it was a power that was beyond me. I could not contain it. I could not control its call. The young scaled ones, he points down at, at uh, Golgama. The kobolds, the orcs, the duogar, the drow, the boggards, all heeded the call of the shard. I could not create, but I could call. Shakes his head. But they are not all that I called to this place. The dragon came. The mother. She dominated this place. She stole my power from me. She enslaved the people of the vault. She drove those who she did not like from her sight. She raised up the kobolds as masters of all. And she stole the shard from me. She used it not to bring life as I had wanted to, but instead to bring death. To bring suffering, not knowledge. In those days, my dream died. It came to war. With a heavy heart, I called the spirits of the earth to do battle against the dragon and those who she had enthralled, for her power is absolute. Many died. Much was lost. And as the founder is telling this tale, by the way, the core is just spinning between her outstretched fingers uh, as if um, kind of just dancing in the air between them uh, as the founder looks upon it um, with oddly a, a look of sadness and regret. It, it's hard to imagine a face made of rock showing misery. No yeah. But it, 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 it somehow comes across. Golgama, by the way, is just praying... Grolo, you don't even know what happened to Grolo. The moment this thing started walking, Grolo hid behind a pillar somewhere. <laughs> so Grolo isn't accounted for. He's around here somewhere. Oh, He's raising okay. his death flag somewhere. We're, we're, we'll remember that later. Uh. As the war raged on, I knew that there was only one answer. 
I would have to do battle with the mother. For only I had the strength to drive her from this place. It was a fierce battle. My wounds were grave. But so were hers. Alas, it was then that I realized the true treachery. I could not kill her. She had hidden her foul spirit within the shard, and I cannot destroy it. In time, she would be born again. And that was my only chance. There was time. Time is something my kin know well. Aeons passed for us in the blink of an eye. And I knew that there was a way to make that time stretch for the mother to infinity. I took the core and imprisoned it in a secret vault. There, its power would be bled out over the aeons, seeped into the very rock. My sin made manifest but it would keep the mother at rest Ooh. as long as it remained in the vault. I can what? see now. It, it <laughs> might have kept the mother at rest, but it didn't keep everybody yeah. else at rest. I, I like to see Lauren as soon as she said it, I can see in the, in the secret vault. And I'm like, it's not really all that secret. It was oh. really easy. <laughs> it's like, Oops. we... Lauren, you hear Grisfell go, oh. It's like, <laughs> it's like it's, you know. I, this, Grisfell kind of leans out of the, the skull and is like, my bad. <laughs> Lauren's learned not to dig too far, Grisfell. You should follow their example. <laughs> All right. It's, it, 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 yeah, it might have seeped into the rock and kept her sleeping, but everything else woke up. Tell me. Has the mother returned? Yep. Oh, yep. Definitely. There is only one way that we can hope to put an end to this menace. We must draw her forth. We must bring her here. Only then can we have any choice, any chance of defeating her. With my power, I can force her soul back into this shard. But while I am doing so, I shall be vulnerable. And her body will still be alive. She looks to all of you. I will need your help. Look, what do look we do? Well, hopefully... Go ahead, go ahead, Rock. Go ahead, Rock. I just want to know what what do we need to do? I will call the mother here. I shall use my power to draw her to the stone. She cannot resist its lure. And once here, I shall do battle with her and drive her spirit into the stone. But I can only contain it there. I cannot defeat her body while also holding her spirit. You will have to do that for me, because if I let go, she will merely return to her body and her full strength. So it sounds like uh -oh. we're battling a dragon, guys. We can this do it. Will, this will definitely be one for the stories later. If you can destroy her body, then I can keep her within the stone. And then what do we do with it? I, I don't know if it can go back to the vault if we found it so easily. I mean, once she's dead in there, the thing might be purified. Well, it was in there in the first place, and then we took it out of the vault, and then she no, woke no, no, up. No, 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 understand, like, the dragon basically uses it as a phylactrophy, like a necromancer, basically. So the dragon more likely corrupted it, because I'm pretty sure this 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 being did not take a necro necrotic shard first and try to make life out of it. More than likely, it was a life-giving shard, so it got corrupted 
by the dragon with his dragon's magic at some point, and we are purifying it, basically. If I if I got the gist right, creature? Uh, you are close. If we put her soul back into the stone, we can contain it. We can buy ourselves time. Is there no way to destroy it? I shall think on this. But we don't have time right now to dwell upon such issues. Let us buy ourselves the time to find a solution. I must begin the ritual. Is there enough time during this ritual that we can rest? She looks to all of you. <laughs> Get your rest. Eight hours, exactly. Right? My so ritual eight will hours, take huh? several hours to complete. So like eight. Rest. <laughs> so it's like eight on the dot? It's it's eight hours and uh, and an hour for preparation, so it's nine hours. <laughs> oh, all right, awesome. Go to sleep. Immediately fall forward and sleep. Just on the stone. It's eight oh, hours to guide her through the caverns gosh. that we had. All it just goes straight down on his face. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> um, so uh, you're given a chance to rest, um, and regain all of your hit points and all of your spells. Yay. Neat. That's all we needed. Really? I'm surprised. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> We're doomed. So, Is like a part of this thing that's like leaking experience points, because I'll sleep there. <laughs> I go over and sleep in the experience point pool. <laughs> yeah. It was well, more of a puddle, but yeah. that's still, it works. Every drink is level 10, so. Oh, nice. No, that's nice. Yeah. That's yeah. not how it works, but uh, yeah. If we create um, a cuddle puddle on the throne, will it level us? No. <laughs> so um, there is a side cave nearby that is kind of warm and quiet, and there is a small pool of fresh water in it. Um, Luxurious. That liner. makes for a perfect place to sleep. Massage chair. Yeah, no, there's, there's definitely a massage chair. Yeah. Spa. <laughs> and by massage chair, I mean Grolo. <laughs> If the word Grolo, I lay down. It's like, I got a few kinks in my back. Yeah. Wizards uh -huh. fighting dragons, Grolo. Come on. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Grolo's like, I can help. <laughs> All right. What well, does Grolo need to roll to give me a decent back massage? I don't I don't think he's very good at it, but sure. Here, have, here's your have D20. roll a Jaws attack. He got like 11. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a perfectly average back massage. All right. Good job, Grolo. Yeah. I hand him a mushroom. He, he does have he does have you know like creepy big hands. So you know, yeah, and moves. a tie, and awesome oh. sunglasses, and a mohawk that we drew on. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> he was cyberpunk Grolo. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jason, is there any chance that uh, Golgama is a high enough level to guest remove curse? Um, like you the next day. You ask Golgama if she can remove a curse, and she says, are you cursed, my child? I mean, more so than we all are with this dragon. Uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> look at me. Yeah, she kind Blood of looks at you with and disdain, kind of and she's like, I feel unnaturally anxious around you. <laughs> my natural charm has been stopgapped. Um... She's like, I can attempt to remove That's all this I can curse. ask. That's all I can ask. I appreciate it. <laughs> all right. So uh, she's going to go ahead and attempt a remove curse for you. Here is the roll. Oh, well. oh. oh no. You spend a villain would point it, on that? Yeah, would it take a villain or a hero point to fix that? Uh, because this benefits the PCs, I'm going to say it takes a hero point. <laughs> I'll use my hero point. Because you're Keely. such a good uh, person. Yeah. Uh, Excellent. Sure. <laughs> sure. It's the last game. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's also not that, you know, also. Yeah. No, here you go. That was 18. Slightly better. An 18 is actually what you needed. So. <laughs> Uh, with that, the curse finally fades away. <laughs> Rock, you're beautiful. I feel great. 
That was the curse was my voice the whole time. This is my normal speaking voice. I, I really do enjoy the Grollo is number one t-shirt he is now wearing. That's nice. <laughs> number one red, red shirt. shirt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just realized that. That's a problem. <laughs> all right. Well, well you you're, got all able to get, you're all able to get some rest. And uh, um, you wake up strangely at peace. This place was a very calming place for you all to get some rest. Um, you all feel refreshed and like surprisingly well rested despite it being kind of a dry small cave uh that you you slept in um and despite the fact that you know that uh your time must be running short before this ritual is completed uh as you uh awake uh golgama is uh uh, just outside your small cave, uh, putting herbs and um, uh, some things from one of her pouches into a, stu a small pot that she's uh, made that is, is really more nothing more than a stone bowl that she's built a small fire underneath. And uh, she's brewing up a tea for all of you. Tea. And, Wait, is um, this that same tea made out of like, uh, like boggard slop? No, no. As a matter oh. of fact, this is nice tea. The, this is oh. actually has like herbs in it. <laughs> Probably the best thing we've had since going underground. There, is, I mean, don't get me wrong. It is still a mushroom tea, but <laughs> doesn't beat the fang. Um, <laughs> it is. It is very calm and earthy. And uh, she, as she hands you all a small cup of tea, she looks at you and says, "The ritual is almost complete." By now, the dragon has undoubtedly noticed that we are in possession of the core and is probably making its way here. You should ready yourselves. I'm going to load my crossbow and Start hold limbering my up. staff at the ready. <clears throat> we uh, we don't have much in the way of like fun one-off items to chuck at this thing, so you're, everyone, everyone's going to have to rely on their own innate abilities. Nah. Well, you all get a chance to uh, prepare your your spells and uh, get a bit of food in you and uh, prepare. Uh, and as you wrap up that process, um, Golgama comes to you and says, it is time. Well. All right, curtain's rising. One last, <laughs> one last show, boys. She takes you up to the throne uh, and uh, there the builder, or sorry, not the builder, the founder is focusing on the core, which is still floating in the air in front of it. And it is now shrunk down to the point where um, even for you, it's probably only like this big now. Uh, and for the founder, it's, it's like a, the tiniest little shard of crystal. And um, uh, the founder is is focusing on it and is just kind of <laughs> is filled it with sounds like a, it sounds like a dog <laughs> <laughs> and um suddenly stops and reaches out to grab the crystal between uh outstretched fingers and looks at all of you and says she is coming and no sooner do the words leave the founder's mouth that you can feel from the cave directly across from you, the cave that you entered, that there is a wind roaring out of that cave and within seconds emerging from the darkness is a terrifying form, a massive form. A dragon comes crawling through the cave, squeezing through it, its claws ripping at the earth. And as it emerges into the room, it goes, Founder, I knew you were behind this. And the founder calmly holds up the core, pushing it towards the dragon, and the dragon suddenly shudders and stops. No, not again. And in an instant, the dragon, which is surrounded by kind of this swirling haze 
of green fire and swirling spirits that kind of smoke and bubble and burn around its bones. Those are drawn forth. They zoom across the cavern, being sucked into this tiny moat of crystal. They are being like pulled forth and the scream of the mother um, is just deafening. But the moment it reaches that crescendo, it starts to fade, pulled apart, pulled and yanked into the stone. In, a, in just a moment, it is over. The dragon collapses, its bones laying on the floor of the cavern. The crystal is pulsing with a frightening green light, and the founder is trying desperately to hold on to it. And at that moment, he looks down at you and through clenched stony teeth says, now is your time to act. And as he says so, the bones across the way suddenly begin to rise. And as they do so, the form of the mother puts itself back together. It is across from you in the cavern. You can see the four crystal pillars around you. Grolo is hiding over off to the side. Golgama is up with the founder up near the throne. Make sure I got everything. Okay, there we are. And at that, everybody, I need everyone to roll initiative. Here we go, everybody. It's finally time. Dawn got a 24. Rock, what did you get? 22. Awesome. What did Yay, everyone else 14. get? I've got the 20. Oh my goddess. Or Let my token won't. Oh, I'm on pan mode, not select mode. There we go. There you go. I believe in you. 20. Oh, of course. The... <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Marissa, you, oh, didn't, you didn't click your your token before. Alana, I got you. No worries. Yeah. I don't need to roll it again. I got you. All right. Um, all right, everybody gets a chance to go. Let me go in here and... It's time, boys. You get the mm. left. I'll get the not right. What? Of course, Grello gets a one <laughs> on his initiative. Go, go, Grello. I have not seen a death flag get risen up so high. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Golgama is focusing all of her energy on the founder, and you're not sure she's going to be able to help you during this fight. She is back there focusing yeah. her prayers on the founder to try and give him strength. So, there we are. The initiative is set. Up first, we have the mother. Oh, dear. <laughs> Hooray! We are all very close to each other, aren't we? And breath weapon range, indeed. Funny that. <laughs> yep, because I know exactly what you're doing here. Take cover! The mother, Is... her bones rise up from the floor, and she kind of, the skeleton, which, mind you, no longer is surrounded by the green spirit armor and is no longer kind of filled with swirling souls, but is still nonetheless like leaking green vapor and energy. She reaches back and just with like kind of an unthinking rage, belches forth this blast of green smoke and darkness that comes overwhelming the entire group, um, who all of whom need to make uh, let's see, reflex saves. There we are. Hey, that's not awful. Ooh. It's all Ooh. of us, right? Yes. 20. Ron got a 25. Should I re-roll that? I think I should re-roll that. That well, is up to you. I'm not yeah. going to tell you whether or not yeah. you succeed or fail before you decide. I'm going to re-roll that. You. Please don't be worse. It's better. 
23. It's, not worse. it's a little better. It's not worse. It's not worse. It's not worse. It is still a fail. <laughs> um, so, um, Alana fails. Everybody else is going to make it, uh, but no one critically Ooh. makes it. So let me go ahead and roll damage on this. Uh, Alana, you're going to take full. Everybody else is going to take half. Ooh, First thing okay. we've got here is this much acid damage. It's okay, Alana. We're at full HP. 19 acid damage, so that's 10 or 9 acid damage to everybody who made it. Yep. And then this much negative damage. 12. All right. For everybody who made it. All right. It's fine. Whoa. Nope, sorry. <laughs> that come out of me? Is that is, 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 nah, wow, that's a lot of damage. Tool. Sorry about that. That was really traumatizing. <laughs> All right. Up oh, there it is. Okay. Uh that was two actions. Uh the next action is going to be let's see. We're going to go ahead and have her move forward. Mm, just there. That's fine. Okay. Uh, that is the mother's turn. Lorne. What All do you right. have for me? Chris failed. Chris failed. Chris failed like, what's up, boss? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, buddy. I know. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to need your help on this one, Chris Are you ready? What do you mean you're going to need my help? <laughs> Chris failed. I choose you. And I uh. throw him across. Oh, I kind of I still keep the skull, but it's like ah, and I like toss his soul out and summon a zombie brute behind the dragon. <laughs> well, kind of like like the bottom left of it, but like you get it. You, like, you get a zombie. What do you get? You get a zombie. Zombie brute. Bruticus, you haven't forgotten Br yeah. Bruticus, have you? Yeah. Bruticus. No, I just need to go get the right. Yeah, the right, uh, Mini. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. There um, you go. Hello. Yeah. Bruticus. Summon Bruticus there. And I'm like, I'll try to help you the best I can, folks. Go get him. All right. So you spend all three actions to summon, summon Zombie Grisfell. Zombie Grisfell is going to appear right there and is going to go ahead and make a fist attack against the mother. Yes. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Uh, that's a, that's yeah. a four. That's a, that's a four. <laughs> try Grisfell. again. Grisfell appears and the zombie has Grisfell's face and he's like <laughs> <laughs> and he'll go ahead and take a second uh, fist attack and uh, that is the second one that's a 24 so that's gonna miss <laughs> darn it well we tried pretty good but uh, he's like ah! <laughs> but he does not manage to that's okay Grisfell I believe in you Bruticus count as a non-magical thing or is he magical um, well, I mean, he's a magically summoned creature, so. So if he, say, ripped his arm off and used it as a club and I cast Shillelagh on his arm. That's not going to work. <laughs> oh. You need if to catch Shillelagh on wood. Arm... <laughs> maybe, right. maybe this is a pirate Bruticus and he's got a peg leg. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Roar! We'll spend 20 hero points to make that happen. All right. Um, I'm going to kind of come up these little steps here uh, and then kind of try to tumble uh, through her space. There you go, Chad. Uh, how much? I go 5, 10, 15, 20, and then back out. Yeah. There <laughs> so you right go. about there. Um, here we go. Okay. Um, oh, grace. Gross, gross, gross. Hero point? I don't like that at all. Yeah, I'm going to hero point that. 26. 26 sure. is going to make it. However, mm. uh, I am going to lash out at you with my tail as you do that. Okay. From the other movement, not from the tumble through. Movement. Yeah. So the tail comes lashing out at you as you come moving in. Yeah, that'll hit. Armor class of 26 for 12 points of damage. The tail comes sneaking out at you um, and uh, slams into you. Um, that is going to reduce your check by two. Mm. Uh, but I think you're probably still fine. Okay. 
four. Okay. Okay. Let me double check. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So you did that. I'm a little a little off balance, but I, I tumble through. She's now flat footed to this attack. Uh, which is gonna come from the striking rapier, and I have panache now. So let's see. I'm not, not adding one. A thirty to hit. Nice. Oh. A thirty is a solid hit. Um, nice. That is not a critical hit, but it is a hit. Um, does she take precision damage? She does take precision damage. <laughs> Good. Um, and then with that, I am going to raise up my buckler. So that's 11 points of damage with a piercing weapon, so that's not going to do quite as much. Um, but you have scratched one of the bones of the mighty dragon. And that... Ah is the end of Rourke's turn. Ilana. All right, that hurt me a lot. So I'm going to take my staff and raise it high and slam it on the ground and release a level three heightened three action heal on everyone. All right. I feel like you should be healing more than just eight. It's 3d8. That is... It's just a, a really bad That roll. is a very poor roll. <laughs> and I cannot re-roll that. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and make a fortitude save for the mother. Well, I'll do it, chief. <laughs> she is going to crit succeed and take nothing. But at least we get eight. Oh, and Bruticus is far enough away. Okay. Yep. Uh, measured, he is safe. <laughs> All right. Um, you unleash a blast of healing magic that uh, uh, heals everyone for eight. Um, and that is the end of Alana's turn. Shenson. All right, I'm going to mirror image and inspire competence, courage, whatever, lingering composition, all of that stuff. So here's my performance check. So 24. A 24 is a success. All right, and that is that for me. I'll start fighting tomorrow. I mean, next turn. Yeah, next <laughs> turn. <laughs> Just buffs now. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, all right. Bottom of the order. Grolo. <laughs> Let's go, Grolo. Let's go. Grolo, no. So, uh, let's see here. Grolo. He's, uh, he's going to take his his, uh, his club. And, uh, <gasps> and he's Grolo's club. He's going to sneak down. He's going to go over here. And he's going to swing. <laughs> no, Grolo, give me the club. Grello's out the can help. <laughs> Grello's out the die, Brissa. We shouldn't waste anything on Grello. <laughs> uh, Let Grello be the hero he wants to be. <laughs> he made he made two attacks. That second one is gonna come up a little short at only a seven. All right. <laughs> no, don't don't you remember the NPCs in this <laughs> started out crushing it? I'm sure Grello. Not better than us. <laughs> Just let me spell his club. Next turn. Next up, the mother. Rourke, you have come running up to this thing. It is um, looking at you with righteous fury. And uh, I am going to go ahead and use Draconic Frenzy on you. I'm going to make two claws and a jaw attack. We're going to start with the claw or the jaw attack. And actually, we'll make a jaw and two claws. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Jaw attack first. Armor class 37. Oh, okay. That's a critical. That is a critical hit. Take 34 points of piercing damage as she, her jaws lash onto you. Also take six points of acid damage as you are burned from the remnants of the kind of ethereal smoke that is coming off of her. She is then going to swing at you with her claws. That's I'm going to wager a 21 is a miss. That is a miss. And so is a 22. Oof. All Woo! right. Ooh, that 21. What was that? Oh, that was a six. All right. Well. <laughs> um, she has uh, lashed out at you. Uh, she is going to throw a fourth attack because she still has one action left after using Draconic Frenzy. Uh, she is going to spend her fourth attack and just throw a tail swipe over at Grollo. No, oh, but it was terrible. Oh, oh that was an awful roll. Yeah. Does Grolla do like a matrix dodge on that? 
Um, he kind of hops over it, <laughs> like oh. a, like it's a jump rope. <laughs> oh, I was imagining he like dropped his stick and leaned down to grab it as the tail came swinging over. Him. <laughs> that is also an accurate uh, representation of what probably just happened. Okay, um. So that is a uh, failure, but not a critical failure against Grollo. Um, and that is... Is this individual. where we find out he's a swashbuckler? <laughs> <laughs> Grollo buckler is the correct term. Yeah, he's a Grollo buckler. <laughs> um, Swash, more locker. I don't know, something like that. Swash lock. <laughs> more buckler. Oh, more buckler. I like that one. <laughs> All right, the mother cries out in rage and frustration as she manages to uh, not really connect with Rourke, except for that terrifying bite attack. Lorne, we are over to you. We are going to sustain Bruticus. And I am going to cast Fireball, but I'm going to try to throw it so far away to where it's like on the wall and only the radius gets it and try to not hit anybody else. You gotta get uh, my meaning. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a spot you can throw it back here where you're only going to hit the dragon. Yeah, awesome. So fireball, whoosh. Not tons of damage, but it'll do something. 22 points of fire damage. Let me go ahead and roll a reflex save against that. Yeah, it's going to, it's, it's probably going to make it. No, it gets a 16. Uh, huh. I'm going to go ahead and villain point that. I'm you. I'm you to hit. There it is. Darn you uh, to hit. 28 will reduce that to 11 points of fire damage. The fire washes over um, the dragon's bones, and it does not have a terrific effect. That's only going to do six. I say. I say. That's the Good end of use my of turn. a villain point. All right, but Bruticus, uh, Grisfell Bruticus here, is going, to, uh, is going to go ahead and take some fist attacks. Here's the first one. That is going to hit... Yeah! Where's the damage? Come here. 17 damage. Nice. Bludgeoning. Yeah, Bruticus! The dragon snarls after that hit and then is going to swing again. But that is going to come up well short. Um... Bruticus is doing his best. Rourke, we are over to you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start this turn with a, a little shield bash to see how it goes. All right. Going to try and bash with the buckler? I'll just try to bash a little buckler bash. Um, that's a 20 to hit, which I imagine might not do it. Yeah, that's not we're flanking. going to It also says plus one from Bob, so you can... I got the thing. plus one in there. Man, I meant for uh, I'm gonna reroll. Uh, never mind. I'm not gonna reroll that. I'm going to uh, shield bash is not my thing. Uh, for my second action, I will do the confident finisher with the rapier. All right. Uh, and you expend your panache, make a confident finisher, Oof. but roll a one. Oofta. Point. Uh, that one I'm gonna reroll. Yeah, I don't want a critical fail. I'll look like a fool. A one and minimum damage. That was minimum all the way around. I was two minimum. That's much 27. better. That's a lot different. <laughs> yeah. A 27 is going to hit for a total of 26 points of damage. That is going to get reduced uh, because it is uh, piercing, but it does do a significant amount of damage. Um, Terrific. Uh, then I will raise my buckler again. All right. You, uh, you, yeah. your rapier darts out like slashing and cutting away at the bones. You manage to connect with one of the ribs in a way that it kind of pops off. Uh, the mother kind of cries out in rage as you uh, start damaging her. Meanwhile, uh, Golgama behind all of you is chanting. The founder is chanting. It is clear that they are losing the battle to keep the spirit inside the stone. Alana, it is your turn. All right. I am going to summon a flaming sphere directly on top of the mother. All right. Five damage. I'm going to go ahead and draw just a little red circle here so we know Ooh. where the, the flaming sphere is. Can I make a hero point attempt to re roll that or no? Um, no, you can't re roll no. the damage. No. Okay. Um, the mother is going to go ahead and make a reflex save against that. And she's going to make it and take nothing as she sidesteps the flame. 
Alana, you do still have one action remaining. And I do still have a loaded bow. So I'm going to shoot it and at least try something. All right. For a second attack, which does not hit. A that natural is a one. one. The crossbow bolt is going to go skittering off the cave wall and fail to connect. All right. That was Alana's turn. Shenson. All right. I'm going to try a probably won't work as well, but maybe. I'm going to try to slow the dragon. Check it. Why did that okay. roll? Um, slow it does require me to make a fortitude save. Let's go ahead and roll that and see how it turns out. Jib. You're fine. A 36 is going to be a critical success. Uh, she rolled All a right. 19 with her mighty bonus, so the slow fails to overcome her draconic hardiness. She shakes well, off gonna, her magic. I'm going to acrobatics over to that spot. Okay. To avoid attacks of opportunity or whatever that thing is. Uh, I believe that requires an acrobatics check. That's a reroll. I'm using a hero point to get a 15 instead of a 17. Oof. Hero points. It's a struggle. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you're actually fine on that. Yeah, no worries. Hooray! Right. Okay. Then I um, then I like land it and I'm like yeah I'm I meant to do that. So uh, Grolo. Oh, that's what it's used for. Okay. Um, Grolo is going to go and the uh, the uh, m fearless Morlock is going to swing his club at the mother. That is going to. Do I have flank? No, I don't. That's going to miss. <laughs> <laughs> if only and is going to swing again but comes nowhere close Grolo is valiantly attempting to uh, hit here but is going to move uh, to try and get to a spot where he might get a flank he's not quite getting one from there but he'll move he'll see what he can do did did, mm. did his plus one from he Bard should. help him flank on a 23 well that Certainly yeah if he had a flank it would have worked oh. but it did it, it, he didn't so, so um, that is Grolo's turn next up is the mother the mother uh, is going to go ahead and yeah I can't see a reason not to do uh, draconic frenzy again uh, I'm going to start out uh, by oh that says take a horn attack oh yeah okay um, actually you know what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a uh, jaw attack um against we're gonna take that against Rourke. Oof. Oh, another fun critical. Good night, everybody. Wait, 37 night. points of damage. The yeah, dragon actually... reaches out after you have dealt it such a grievous wound, grabs hold of you, dealing Jeez. Uh, 36 points of damage total. Yep. Yeah. Good night. I'm down. And then tossing oh. the body aside, you gain what? Dying two. Two. From that. It's a critical. It's always a critical. Oop. <laughs> 22. Dying 22. Oh, no. There we go. All right. <laughs> oh. Um, then I'm going to use the Draconic Frenzy, and I'm going to start by making a claw attack back at the zombie there. Oh, well. 22 is going to hit for 17 points of damage. It can hold. Hold, gets failed. Hold. Third claw is going to come up just a hair short. Uh, and then uh, let me go ahead and make that tail attack as well. 24. That is going to do more damage. Let's see, what's the AC on this guy? Wait, can it do four attacks? Because it takes like two actions to do the one thing. Yeah, so the, the one thing gives me three attacks. And then I have my third action to get a Oh, four. yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, dragons are tough. They get a lot of attacks. Um, So that is going to... Yeah, uh, well, oh, nope. There's two claw and one horn strike. Yeah, Uh, the uh, mother rips apart... Grisfeld doing ah. very serious damage, uh, but the zombie does manage to keep standing because I didn't score a crit and just totally obliterated. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a chonky boy. He, he yeah, will he, hold. He's he's holding for the moment. Next up, Lorne. The mother is 
crying out in rage and fury. She looks hurt, but is still in good fighting order. Rourke mm. is down. Lauren, what do you got for me? Uh, yeah, well, that's kind of the problem. Not much to really do. And Garlo decided to get closer to the darn zombie, which is a problem. <laughs> it's like, one you to not be near the zombie, Garlo. You're messing <laughs> things up. Grolo by just being here. <laughs> Grolo is helping. No, you're not. Tell me how you're helping, Grolo. <laughs> I am hitting it with my stick. Yeah, and you're in the way of the explosion. I will kill Grolo. <laughs> like, I'll do it. I am okay with killing Grolo, but I know the internet would get really mad. So we're just gonna just get really disappointed in it and just do a heightened shocking grab. Well, no, I can't do that. I have to sustain, so I can't even do that either. Goes, Grrr, Zori! Talk to that projectile. Boom. Well, you only pick up a piece of rock and go winging it at the I'm gonna dragon. That's that. not going to hit. Yeah, I'm you, gonna you put that. a you you put a fire well, you put a fireball in a place that hurt the dragon. Can you just move the zombie to that exact same place? No, the issue the issue is that final sacrifice takes two actions, and the zombie goes after uh, me. So the zombie's going to die more than likely next turn. And I can't delay my action because that takes a turn, or else I would delay it, make the zombie move, and then do it. So I can't delay my action to okay. then do that action. Fair enough. So that's... So I looked it up. <laughs> so I was like, how many actions is delay? Crap! And then I <laughs> just closed the book. So you... Angry. You re you re-roll the uh, telekinetic projectile attack, and uh, it does... Uh, does manage to connect. You pick up a piece of rock from the floor and go flinging it at the dragon. That does hit it. And as it is a piece of rock, it does bludgeoning damage. So that mm -hmm. does penetrate the dragon's defenses and it roars out in pain as the rock slams into it. Excellent. The, the zombie then goes and as it makes a strike attack, the dragon's tail lashes out at it. Yeah. Armor class of 27 is a critical hit that is going to do another 20 points of damage to the zombie. Uh, but that didn't destroy the zombie, so it still gets to attack. Ooh, but rolls very poorly. Come on, Bruticus. Get one last hit in before you die. He's going to try again. A 20! A natural, natural 20, 20 for a critical hit. That is going to do 14 points of damage. Um... The dragon roars out in pain as the uh, zombie continues its uh, withering assault against it, but it is still standing. Elana, what do you got for me? Oh, no, 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 no. Work is down and my attacks didn't work. I'm going to let the flaming spirit go and just cast another heightened three action heal and hope that the dice bless me a little bit more. You probably, uh. Did you just move the no, dragon? No, you, you do whatever. I did, but only just to get rid of the uh, flaming spirit. What do you recommend, yeah, Peyton? Don't worry. I was going to recommend you can do a two-action heal for him. And uh, so you'll do a lot more healing in the one burst. And uh, Shinsen's okay for yeah, the most but... part. I'm fine. And Rourke really needs the up because he's basically our tank right now. So we might give him That's a chance true. to survive. That's true. My more. thought was also attacking the dragon with it as well. Yeah, it's it's better to keep Rourke your alive call. at this point, I guess. But yeah, it's all, all to you. I'm just giving you suggestions. Like, I don't want to... Like, I'm, oh, I'm sorry no. for being rude and backseat game. Here at the very end, the party suddenly is like, what do we do? <laughs> yeah, it's oh, like, no, oh, no. it's all do your choice. It? Like, you you stick with whatever you want. I, what? I don't, what what's your call, options. Uh, Alana? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to two-action heal and just put Rourke back up then. We can do damage to the dragon, but Rourke needs to come back up. So right. heightened two-action, point my staff straight at Rourke. Uh, this is a level three heal. Yes. All right. So it's, it's actually going to do that plus what? Twenty four. Plus twenty four. Why is it in the wrong section? One moment. That's fine. Forty two. Okay. Ooh, forty two. Thank you. For some reason, the twenty four got moved to the miscellaneous instead of uh, the right miscellaneous. So when Alana, you do still have one action remaining. I'm going to reload my crossbow. All right. Shenzhen. Dog agrees. All right. <laughs> I'm delighted to see Rourke stand up. Oh, he's not standing yet. Well, he's like, I can see his feet twitching. He's still his prone and his weapon is dropped. Oh. Well, I'll save him. I'll, I'll slash this uh, dragon right up with my scimitar. Right. 
So, no, hey. yeah, I should have called I should have called out another chop off its arm with that crit, but whatever. <laughs> the party is dropping crits on the mother left and right. Uh, you slash out with your uh, your scimitar cracking one of its forearms. You deal 18 points of slashing damage that is going to get reduced, but it is something. Um, all right. I'll keep going. All right. It's a 25. 25 is also going to hit. That's not a crit, but it is a hit. Yeah. And uh, that is going to do a little bit more. And then now it's actually going to do plus, it's going to do 12 points because of the uh, forceful. Ah, gotcha. And then I'll try a third attack. All right. And I will hero point that roll. All right. Just in case. Pulling out all the stops yeah. at the very end. A yeah, 17, seven. though, is not going to do it. Going to come up just a bit short. That is the end of Shenson's turn. Next up, Grolo. He's going to run to the back of the thing. <laughs> there. Go, go, Grolo. He's got a flank, and he's going to swing. <laughs> he's going to get his 10d6 sneak attack in. He had a flank before. No, he didn't. He wasn't at the right angle. Um, okay. That is going to miss, though, and then he's going to spend his third action to attack again. No! <laughs> Grolo is helping. You suck, Grolo. Oh, um, my gosh. Grolo, let me spell the club. I'm killing Grolo. <laughs> Those kind of the terminates. It's like, if he doesn't hit this time, I have a grand thing. I'm, I will death flag Grolo myself. <laughs> At the bottom of the round, a towering skeleton. It looks like the dragon brought friends. Uh, um, yep, he's dead. What? in the tunnel behind uh, uh, all of this. All of those will go on the mother's turn. Um, or actually, they'll go at the end of the round. Uh, that is Grolo's action. Rourke, you go right before the mother. You are prone. You do not have your weapon in hand. It is on the ground next to you. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. I am going to... Uh pick that up. I knew I should have taken whatever the feat is uh, like good good crawling or something like that for for a swashbuckler. Um um grab this thing. I'm going to uh, I'm going to stand up and since the buckler doesn't really matter <laughs> clearly, I'm just going to uh, I'm going to poke it. All right. So you poke this you, dragon. You grab your sword, you stand up and you attempt to poke the dragon. Take this. Ooh, that is going to hit. Um, you slash out with your rapier and manage to connect. Um, you have all push. have done a tremendous amount of damage to the mother, but she is still holding it together. Her bones are falling sure. apart. At this moment, you can see the founder is desperately holding on to that shard of stone. Golgama is praying and focusing her her essence up toward it to lend her strength to the founder and he looks like he is losing it you can see his stone starting to crack and break he cannot contain her spirit much longer it is now the mother's turn she is looking terribly wounded she reaches back draws in her breath and unleashes another gout of terrifying flame Oh, no. This is going to hit everyone, including Golgama. I need everyone in the party no. to make me a reflex save. Now, here we I'm going to hero point my 16. I need to hero point that 14. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Craig is doing it. Marissa's doing it. Also, Chad, if I missed any points that you did, because I'm focusing on a lot right now, uh, just remind me. All but, right. Uh, so Lauren got a 26. Rourke and Lorn are going to make it. Shenson and Alana are going to fail, but both of them avoided crit fails. Um, so uh, both of them are taking max damage on this. Here it comes. Acid damage is 14. Seven if you made it. Negative damage is 19 or nine if you made it. Oh, all right. That hurts. That hurts quite a bit. That was two of the mother's actions. With her third action, she is going to lash out and bite. You're going to do a die Benson. if you want to do it. Okay. Yeah. Just because I critically hit her in the face. Oh. 26, huh? 
Armor class 26. Please determine if that was a mirror image. Ah! No, <laughs> a mirror image. Oh. Never, never, ever, ever gets old. Oh, I like now you got like spray coming out of like random rocks in the corners. and <laughs> Yeah, I did. I'm so furious. <laughs> All right. So a D4, the four is you. Come on. That's not me. Ah, Hooray! <laughs> That's Lefty Shenson. Bye, Lefty Shenson. I'll see you next time. Ah, you tricksy. That, that Shenson was wearing like a pinstripe suit and a gangster hat and had a Tommy gun. Oh, she should have stuck around. She should have stuck around. She oh. was she was pretty cool. You I never told me she had a Tommy gun. I need that to roll a, a reflex save for Golgama. I assume there's also there's like a pirate Shenson and then mm -hmm. like a... Uh, 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 cowboy Shenson, um, Shenson, yeah, and then the, the fourth one. What's the fourth one? A ninja. So there's only th that's me. Oh, there's, that's there's me. only three of them. That's you. The, you're the ninja one. Yeah. Oh, um, Golgama is going to fail. That hurt Golgama very badly, but she is still standing. Um, she is, after all, an accomplished uh, healer. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Golgama looks like she was very badly hurt. She kind of collapses to one knee and is still holding her hand up, trying to focus her energy upon the founder. That is the end of the mother's turn. Lorne. All right. Team, thumbs up or down for Grolo. See if he's going to survive can... a final sacrifice spell. We can, we can save him. Do it. Blow it up. You yeah, know you want bro. to. Just do it. Bro can't be, can be put <laughs> down like by spells. No, it's like, there's no argument. It's just, do it. <laughs> do <laughs> just it. Blow. All right, let's blow it up. That's very, it's very Lauren. Just do it. Well, I know my alignment. And we will now do final sacrifice on Bruticus. Kaboom! You Oof. monster. <laughs> you see, Grolo can totally roll a 20 on this crit and, and just, just dodge it. He's Drop your club, Grolo. Pick your club and dodge it. it. I guarantee you, Grolo's going to roll a one. That is incredible damage. That is really quite good. So, uh, let's see. That's 30 points of damage. Uh, let me go ahead and roll for the mother first. Okay. Okay. You're just drawing it out now, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to see we kill of 11 NPC. Attention. Oh, the mother yeah. rolls That's a going critical team. fail. Point that. That's a critical no, fail. No, no. I'm going to villain point that. I know you oh. were. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's, it's worse! Mind. Yes! Yes! Screw you! I get a win! I win! You never win! <laughs> uh, tell us how you really feel, Peyton. I'm the zombie excited. explodes, fire <laughs> blasts into the mother. The damage causes her bones to crumble. Even Eric is laughing at you, Jason. To the floor. <laughs> However, there's one saving throw I still need yeah, to Yeah, I was make. about to say. Let's see. <gasps> his <Grolo>. crit fail. <laughs> uh, you, mean, this, you mean the skeleton down the south? Skeleton. The skeleton. Yeah, the skeleton. Fire, right? right? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. The skeleton Our skeleton magic doesn't punches. affect Grolo at all. That's gone. <laughs> He's survived the case for this long. To perish, Grolo. Grolo must make a saving throw. The beloved character must roll a save. Against We're, the ball of flame. Here it 20, comes. Nat 20, Nat 20. Come on, Grolo. We believe in you. He hey, got a 26. He, he saved. He, su he succeeded. Maybe. I mean, take half, but Grolo still. takes 15 points of damage, which leaves Grolo with hit points left. <laughs> Hooray, Grolo. Grolo. There I'd is see. a massive I knew it was gonna be blast fine. of flame. The fire washes over the bones of the mother, and they crumble and fall to the ground in a gigantic pile of smoldering ash but even now you can see that the the founder who is holding that crystal looks like he is at the very edge of his power and before we resolve that i think we're going to take a short little break we're at about the midpoint of the stream here and this is normally where we wait. take a little break and allow our cast to uh, get themselves a beverage before we finish up this stream so uh, I, I want to encourage you all to stick around especially all of you raiders who came by uh so uh by all means stick around we will be back in just a few minutes for the second half of this stream thanks for watching it's my turn let me heal grow up we'll get them later <laughs> like after the break
<laughs> you don't have to do it now. All right. All right. Be right back. All right. Be right back, everybody. Welcome back. Um, when we went on break, the party had just been facing off the against the bones of the mother, the terrifying dragon that has been roosting in Cobalt Town for centuries. Currently, they are standing over its smoldering bones while the founder, a powerful ancient earth elemental spirit, is holding a stone, the Elon core, that contains the spirit of this dragon, preventing it from escape. And as you are standing there, the founder is starting to crumble and break as he, as it, focuses on this tiny sliver, this tiny shard of the Emerald Spire holding the tiny gem between its fingers. The founder is focused on it and through gritted stony teeth says, she's grown too powerful. I cannot control her. And at that, let me see something. Uh, oh. We're still in initiative. That's concerning. Yeah, well, you know, I'm just gonna, just gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so uh, let's see. Lorne, can you give me a will save? Oh. Oh no. Quite suddenly, it feels as if there is a Got presence <laughs> trying to force its way into your mind. I have a 30 total. Um, you are struggling to keep this thing out of your mind, out of your body. It feels as if you are being invaded. I insult um, it as it tries. Like, come on, keep trying. You know you can't do it. Um, you really but, want to be in Lorne's head. But with a 30, you are managing to hold it at bay. Um, so th this, I, I kept initiative up, but that was just so that I had an order in which I could, I could read uh, characters. Um, the founder um, says, the core will no longer contain it. Um, what do you do? Can we smash the core? Would that smash her? Or would that just like release her? Um, you, from what you understand, the core is basically indestructible, or at least by any means that you have. <laughs> um, it, it's possible it could be destroyed, but right now you're not you're not seeing a way. Well, what can we do? It's it's. And I assume I'm like just... struggling too, like on oh. my knees, going, "Oh God!" <laughs> it's like I'm like holding my head, just having a struggle against this thing. Maybe um, this uh, this earth creature can like he, I assume he's like a lot of earth creatures can like just melt through the ground. Maybe he should just carry it all the way down to the core and drop it off in on Robogog's footsteps. <laughs> Here Robogog you go. Fix it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and roll again here. Uh, Rourke, give me a will save. Right, right. Uh, oh, a twenty-eight. Not bad for me. You um you feel again an invasive force uh trying to muscle its way into your body. Wow. Um and uh with kind of supreme effort you're able to kind of keep it from taking over. It is desperately trying to like manipulate your bodies and figure out how your strange bird limbs work. <laughs> <laughs> they don't always work like they're supposed to. Get out of here. <sighs> yeah, uh, but you do manage to hold it at bay. And the founder, through kind of gritting teeth, and as he is saying this, by the way, he is literally crumbling. Um, his body is just coming apart. And uh, the founder says, the spirit must be taken. It must be taken to its rest, and I cannot take it there. And um, at that... Where does it need to go? What does it need to go? Um. Oh boy, I need to roll a save for Grolo. No, not <laughs> Grolo. Oh, this is the end game you planned from day one, isn't it? It's the die I rolled. What do you want from me? Grolo, here? The end maker that's, rises. That's why you brought Grolo. Grolo's the final boss. The use your king. villain point. Use your villain point, Jason. Let him re-roll it. I am going to. Do I have a villain point left? Yeah, you have two of them. 
I am going to burn a villain point to give Grolo a reroll. Oh, that's going to be worse, though. Here comes the curse. Give him a chance. Give him a chance. No, it's worse. It was going to be worse. (laughs) Chat, nobody give him any more villain points. Grolo suddenly starts twitching and shaking and going, Grolo does not feel well. Grolo (laughs) is angry and starts Uh slowly marching forward. Um, What do you do? Is the um, coin- we'll, we'll do this in order. Grolo is at the bottom. Lauren, what do you do? I should have thought I've sacrificed you before. <laughs> just roll up. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 you're like, we could. Like, part of me. <laughs> Grolo. Grolo, buddy, don't, don't make us do it, Grolo. I Grolo summon. Grolo is like, Grolo must kill. <laughs> Uh-uh, Grolo, with the power of love and friendship, we can get through this. Grolo, Grolo, don't do it, Grolo. I summon, uh, I summon a uh, a skeleton, just a normal skeleton. Just <laughs> like, with, uh, I guess, guess it would technically be a goal. Whichever one, you, whichever one, skeleton or goal, I don't care what you put in front of them. That, uh, just put them in front of Grolo and be all like, don't do it, Grolo. Grolo, we're your friends, remember? Buck, we we went to prison together. <laughs> like, we were uh, we were we were cellmates. We we, we, uh, we got those we, teardrop tattoos. Yeah, we got the, <laughs> we got we got cool you know stuff together. You know, it's like remember the good times, Grolo. We we're gave you together. a bug. Grolo uh, lashes out, um, and that attack is let's see, it's higher than that because Grolo is empowered yeah. right now. Uh, it's gonna hit it. It's gonna. That in. is wow. a twenty-five. Um, so that is going to hit for instead of doing plus four, it's going to do plus ten. So that's going to do uh, fourteen points of damage and obliterate the skeleton. <laughs> um, that was uh, Lorne uh, Rourke. Do you have anything you want to do? I'm gonna run up to Grolo, and ooh, and oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hug him. Uh-huh. You're, uh, you're I'm gonna, gonna, I'm hug gonna him. I'm gonna grapple him. I'm gonna attempt to grapple him. Oh, okay. That's the... <laughs> yes. Grolo, don't and I'm just gonna try to grab him. Uh let's see. Is this isn't uh, you, buddy. Uh that is actually gonna make it. <laughs> All right. You run up uh, and grapple Grolo, and Grolo's like, Grolo with must kill. This isn't you. This isn't you, buddy. Someone get this dragon spirit out of him! Ah, ah. Um, uh, I technically have another action, but I'm not sure if I can move him. That that's another, you know, get um, him closer. Give me I an know. athletics check and see if you can kind of drag him. Yeah, I just want to try to drag him a little bit. Twenty-one. Uh, you can move him five feet. I just we'll just move him a little. I just want to get him closer to the. All right. To the to the people who have religious powers. Exercise this guy. <laughs> With the power of tree, I compel you, punk. Um, Alana, what are you doing? Oh, I'm looking back and forth between Grolo and the founder, and he said he needs to take the course somewhere. Where do we? What do we have to do? Where do we need to take it? Ah. Oh, I'm asking. The the founder looks like he's deep in focus right now. He he heard your question, but he can't quite answer you yet. Um. That was like one of your actions. What is there anything you want to do, or you just want to kind of hang tight? I'm, I'm hanging tight. I have my staff prepared. All right, uh, Shenson, is there anything you would like to do? Do we want to try to get this thing out of Grolo's head, or do we want to keep it there and kind of try to keep Grolo in control? I don't know if Grolo's strong enough. Yeah, Grolo seems supernaturally strong right now. Like, well, well <laughs> physically, Grolo's- but mentally, I meant yeah. Grolo is like um, rippling with unholy power. <laughs> well, somebody mentioned uh, friendship and, and happiness, and I'm going to just mm-hmm. spray rainbow all over Grolo. <laughs> Grolo, check this out. These happen all the time up on the upper side of things. You should totally just mellow out and come with us up to the surface. Care Bear Stare. The double rainbow. Double <laughs> rainbow. I'm not hitting Rourke unless he's into it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't do hit me. <laughs> okay. That's, all right. I will attempt a will safe. save as you try and. And blast poor Grolo with a with a. Uh, and Sparkles. I do actually have quite a bonus on that, so that is going to make it. Um, that's only a success though, so Grolo is dazzled for one round. 
All right. Um, which is good because Grolo is going to attempt to break free from the grapple, and uh, I've got a plus. Well, I've still actually got one uh, one action left. Uh, sure. I'm going to go on the other side and, and flank Grolo just in case. Just in case, sure. Um, <laughs> Grolo is going to attempt to break free. I'm going to make an athletics check to attempt to uh, muscle free. I have a plus five bonus on top of whatever I roll, and that is terrible and is not going to do it, so I'm going to struggle again. 22 against your, what is it, fort DC? Let me check. I don't know, is it, or is it my athletics DC? Skills. Healy gets the book. <laughs> it wouldn't yeah, be a right. game if somebody didn't have to get the book, right? <laughs> the book. I mean, it's part of the whole experience. For grapple. No? Who wouldn't want to have like DC just a, of the, wait, you know? Uh, typically, the athletics to see of a creature grabbing you to escape from a grapple. Yeah, my athletics DC is nineteen. Nineteen. So he's going to break free with his second action, yeah. and oops, isn't that an attack though? Is uh, the second one? He's gets a minus five. Yeah, but he had a plus five, so I just called that a flat roll. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and then with his third and final action, uh, he is uh, going to swing his club, but this is going to be bad. So, uh, but he's going to try anyway. He's going to swing it at at you. He's Grolo must kill. Whoa. Um, that is higher than that. That is a let's see. That's a twenty-two, but that's gonna miss. Okay. Thank you to miss, yeah. Um. All right. Uh. That was the end of Grolo's turn. It is now the bottom of the order. The uh founder says, through kind of the the gritted teeth, someone must take the spirit, take it to the boneyard, take it to its rest. It must go, and I do not have a spirit to take it. Oh. Oh, yeah. So while it's inside of Grolo, we just have to carry Grolo to the boneyard and uh, uh, just let nature take its course, super nature take its course. Golgama is holding, is is boosting this this ritual in every way that she can, kind of adding her, her magic to the ritual. And uh, she says, its spirit is still inside the stone. This is just a manifestation. Oh. Gimme, 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 gimme. Well, how far is this boneyard? Let's go. <laughs> um, to give me a religion check. <laughs> oh, that boneyard. <laughs> uh, I'll roll a religion check anyway. Yeah, you oh, know what yeah. the boneyard is. <laughs> um, He's saying that this... This spirit, you know, you you make a religion check. Basically, this spirit has been denied. It's has been stopped on its trip to the afterlife, as all spirits do, and someone has to take it there. So basically, someone has to die with it. That's what it sounds like. Yep, yeah, that's what it sounds like. What about somebody already dead? What about Grisfell? Could Grisfell die here? Oh suddenly shakes to life. Mr. Grisfell! This is your chance at redemption, Grisfell, so you don't I, go, I, go to the, the place we talked about. Mr. Grisfell, I know we promised finding you a nice mountainside or a cliff or somewhere with a view, but we could really use a favor at the moment. It's time Grisfell to fix emerges mistake, from Grisfell. the skull, looks at all of you, and he says, it's time. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Grisfell. Grisfell walks up to the founder, reaching out his hand. His ghostly hand passes through Golgama. He reaches up to the hand of the founder and his fingers brush against the shard. He looks back at all of you and he says, thank you. I'm sorry I caused so much trouble. This is the least I can do. At least I can finally rest. 
And he looks at you, Lorne, and he says, take care of that book. There's a few things in there you probably shouldn't mess with. Make sure it stays in the right hands. That's Take it from thing. me. And suddenly, Grolo goes limp. Grisfell reaches his hand through the stone and pulls out a knot of black smoke. Holds it almost as if he is struggling with it. And he says, I'm ready. And we'll Griswell remember you. In, in, we'll remember you. We'll tell your tale. Griswell, we'll tell your tale. He holds it, closes his eyes, and Grisfell fades away. Leaving you all in a quiet chamber. Golgama collapses to the floor. The founder slumps back down into his throne, looking out at all of you. He says through his grated teeth, I am redeemed. My folly is finally at an end. And as he collapses into the throne, his body crumbles away, at first into rock, then into smaller stones, then into sand, and then into dust. And the founder fades away. Grolo stands back up and goes, did we win? We did. Sure we did, did, Grolo. We did Grolo. Yes, Grolo, we, we did. And then I hug him again, because, but for real. Only because your mind is a steel trap that held back the mightiest of dragons, Grolo. Grolo looks at all of you. <laughs> <laughs> You're a hero, and Grolo. He's, he, he, he like reaches down into his pouch, gets out a water skin and just starts dumping it all over his head and wiping his head clean. <laughs> Grolo's head feels unclean. Oh, yeah, Grolo. That'll, that'll get deal with time. Golgama, are you fine? Golgama slowly stands up. She is wounded. She took one of those blasts quite badly, but she is still fine. And she looks up at the throne looks down at the, the now rapidly decaying, turning to dust bones of the mother. And she says, I am well. I am hoping that now we can heal. Come, friends. We should go. Where's the rock? <clears throat> Golgama leads you uh, from this place, unless there's anything else you want to do here. Uh, um, where is the little bit of the emerald spire? Is it just on the ground? Is it still floating? It slowly um, like descended from up above, and Golgama reached out and grabbed it. Okay. Because if she didn't, I was going to pilfer it. Um, she She takes it and says, I will ensure that this is put away for safekeeping. That would probably be best. Um, oh, before we leave, I'm going to go over to that pile of probably dangerous dragon dust. And yeah. If any like sinister necromancer <coughs> norm, uh, can do anything about it, I'll clean it up. All right. Uh -huh. What? Necro stuff? <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Draco Where's dust? It? Where's it? Where's it? Where's it? <laughs> um, so Golgama uh, leads you uh, from the Earthen Throne, uh, and from here she takes you back to Kobold Town. The oh, journey um... is slow, um, and uh, Golgama, uh, uh, about halfway there, Golgama is like, we should rest. Um, we are all wounded and tired. And um, because you kind of came here at a breakneck pace, 
the the pace back Golgama is moving quite a bit slower and um uh the next day after you get some rest she uh escorts uh the the group of you back to Cobalt Town and uh upon entering the main vault um there appears to be some sort of commotion going on <laughs> You can see um, there are lots of uh, folk uh, marching up on the town. There are bogards and orcs, and uh, you even see some Durgar and some Svartnevlin and an awful lot of kobolds uh, marching up around the town. And you can see small groups of hooded kobold cultists being led off in chains back towards the bug pits for temporary holding. Um, and... Golgama looks back at all of you. The mother's hold over them is broken. We will have to teach them a new way. Um, and she takes you back to town, and it's, not surprisingly, a bit of a uh, mess. The cultists um, quickly looted and, and burned and pillaged stuff, and uh, the dragon caused damage all over the place. Um, but um, all of that seems to have come to an end. It looks like many of the kobolds fell under the sway of the dragon, uh, but some were devoted cultists, and they apparently are still kind of fervent believers. But most of the kobolds um, looks like they've uh, come to their senses. <coughs> Um, let's see, where was I? Oh yeah, here we are. Um, Golgama takes you back up to the temple. Uh, she leads you into town and straight up, uh, into the temple. And at this, I should probably let me go back to you. Cobalt Town. Here we are. Yep. You probably want to get rid of all the fire and brimstone around town. I do, in fact. If I can easily. Easier said than done, actually. Ah! Oh, Cobalt oh Town's gosh. gone. Ah! There ah. we go. That's one way to solve it. <laughs> Let's bring it up in a layer. All right. So uh you make it you make your way back to Cobalt Town and, and Golgama takes you back up to the main temple, which is kind of in ruin. Um the um the building itself looks like the the mother used it as her roost during her reign. And Golgama takes you uh, into the uh, into the 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 main uh, altar chamber, and uh, which is now open to the sky above because that's where the dragon's skeleton was hanging. And uh, she says, "Friends, the people of Cobalt Town owe you much, but one way that we can repay you and honor your." sacrifice is to teach the true history of this place so that we do not forget so that we do not make the same mistakes of the past yes we no longer have a symbol that we can rally upon around but instead we have each other the community we have built here the people who we have come to call friends and we have you to thank. Are you saying that the treasure and religion we discovered was the friends we made along the way? Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> like throw my hat down. <laughs> like to stop on it. Like, I wanted gold. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want friends. <laughs> I wanted well, riches. Want friends. I'd be so you rich. I don't have to have friends. That's been sitting on your head. It's like, oh, I thought I was your friend, Lauren. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, I, I have a figure for you though to uh to show as a representation, however, I have a wonderful candidate. Someone who still factually helped slay the dragon and brought peace upon the land. And you're looking at that person right there, and I point the shins in. Excellent model for a statue. And the name rings just fine for a town. Just easily get a Ooh. statue going there. Since it obviously took down the dragon. Isn't that right? 
Uh, I honestly thought you were going to mention right. it was Quokka's Quokka. Uh, yeah, right. I, I did it. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what you're and, up to. But sure. And everyone must always be, be part of a band of bravado to be the new mentality of town, don't you think? There's something for them to rally about. Gogama says, surely there shall be a celebration marking this day. For now, it seems, well, a little more, less appropriate to be celebrating the mother's final egg, especially after it hatched. I lean over to Rourke kind of looks up and, at the and be all like, that's ceiling. a way of saying that idea is stupid and no. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, Jason, you're saying there's the mother's dragon, the egg hatched at some point. That wasn't the dragon skeleton. There's another dragon out there that is the mother's progeny. She looks at the Golgama ghost. No, no, that was always our twisting of the tail. Oh, okay. The egg that was, that was then. secreted away was the gem. Oh, uh, I should have gotten that. It's all illusion and 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 diegesis. I I sorry. And she's like, do not worry. It took me some years to untangle the meaning of our ancient texts. She kind of takes out that old book and kind of tosses it in the the heap uh, up near the altar. And she says, and we will, we must find a way to secure this and ensure this never happens again. And she kind of holds up the tiny shard of the Emerald Spire. We can take it away. So your land will never have to deal with it again. Or you can build it into the heart of a golem that will certainly forever remain and, your and loyal after, and happy and, minion. And I've I, heard good things about these ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, and Which? I, and, it, we need a reward. You know, we've shaved oh, everything, so a feast, and now she, she I looks feel at you it would be says, better with us. Although I'm sure you have the best of intentions, Lorne. I believe that this stone is tied to this place. We should safeguard it against any further tampering, but it should remain here. It is a place of this. It is a piece of this vault. It is our, well... It is our heart as well, and the dragon stole it. We should put it back. In the coming days, the town of Cobalt Town, the town of Cobalt Town, great job, Jason. Uh, the <laughs> the community of, of Cobalt Town begins to rebuild. The streets are cleaned up. Some of the houses that are irreparably damaged are turn, torn down. And the folk of the town try to get back to normal. It takes several days. You're enlisted to help with a handful of small tasks. There are some cultists hiding in a basement somewhere. There's a wild beast that was underneath the arena that got free and has to be hunted down. Again and again, the folk of Cobalt Town come running for their saviors, for the Band of Bravos, whenever they have any sort of trouble. Your good friend Grolo... Uh, uh, hangs out with you for a good period of time, but eventually returns to the bug pits. He seems he's been promoted and given uh, 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 a role overseeing the bug pits and especially making sure none of the remaining kobold cultists escape. Soon thereafter, Snelk finds you, sends you a missive, and offers to host the celebration of your victory hosting a gigantic party at the Dragon Fang. The Cracked Fang. Uh, where, uh, oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, here we are. <clears throat> Later on that evening, a gigantic party is thrown. <clears throat> the, it is filled with visitors from all around the Eternal Vault, including a few entertaining surprises. Grolo is, is, of course, there, along with a new good friend of his, Frong. They will be very happy together. Grolo and Frong hang out at the front of the stage, ready and excited to hear about your performances. There is also another exciting development. King Brightcrown has made an appearance. He traveled down here with Captain Halvren, after getting word of your victory and at the behest of the orcs. And they are deep in negotiations to form a long and lasting treaty. As it turns out, 
King Bright Crown has agreed to be the surface connection for the uh, Eternal Vault, working with the orcs to trade goods and services with the surface world and the people of the vault. It is undoubtedly a deal that is going to secure the Goblin King's future for some time to come. But that's not all. That's not the only people who are here. Il Noshra and Bombak is here. If you remember Bombak, you left a uh, a strange statue in the back of his his shop. I hope he liked it. Yeah, yeah. I hope he liked it. <laughs> <clears throat> um, Gargetha Clearsight is here along with her son, uh, Herak, and the two of them are uh, negotiating and chatting with King Brightcrown over the upcoming trade deal. Ivona is here, and her brother Ricarnus, who appears to have recovered from his ordeal with at the hands of the drow. And of course, Snelk and all of his cousins and uncles and aunts and other assorted siblings are here. And Snelk even said, hey, listen, you guys did great. Half off your drinks tonight. Thank you, Snelk. I'll let the dragon Thanks for eat. Reward we've got <laughs> He's also promised that you will have unlimited uh, 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 stay in the shack behind his bar whenever you visit town. I, like, wait, what is, I assume we're having this conversation kind of like in his back room and I see the yeah. shack back there and yeah. I, and I look at it. How like describe the shack to me real quick. So the, the, the this is the, the, the shack that you were staying in, right? Uh, uh huh. The, is it the, still it's run just, down and garbage. Yeah. Yeah. I cast it's fire the hole in the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I did 20 far damage to the, uh, shack make it needs to make a <laughs> reflex save. <laughs> the shack fails its reflex save. <laughs> it takes it critically fails, and takes a lot of damage, and is on fire. <laughs> it's like, oh, that shack that you never fixed. Snelk is like, hey, hi, <laughs> I'm Lorne, and I'm very angry about it. <laughs> um, all right, so Lorne's out back burning down the shack. <laughs> The one thing he always wanted to do. <laughs> um, Grolo and Frong are sitting up near the stage, and Grolo comes up and says, "I want to thank you. You, 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 you saved me." Ah, uh, Grolo is nothing. You're, it's what friends you, do. You, it's what you, friends do exactly. You helped me escape the Durgar, and and then and then when the dragon had taken over my brain. <laughs> And oh, yeah. it was a good hug. You are very kind. <clears throat> it really is the power of friendship. Yay. Um, Frong is sitting next to him and he's like, yeah, you guys are pretty great. I, uh, I even talked to my friend Quoka. He's willing to cut oh. you guys a deal on boats. Hold up. I got a, I got a couple more fireballs. <laughs> 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 the whole tavern's gone. <laughs> All right. Well, um, uh, as you, uh, you've been asked to perform. So for one last yes. time, if I could get the party to give me a, uh, an idea of their performance and some perform checks, please. I have been working on the story of our, of our journey and our tale down into, to, to couple town and all, all involved in it. It is a, it is a, it is a, a lovely play called dragon heart. <laughs> 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 We open on uh, <laughs> and I described a lonely castle I, I in the fog in the Rourke, distance. I encourage Rock and Shinshin to lead with this one. Go on. We'll support no, I'm, you. I'm, I'm eager to see what work comes up with. I'm gonna accompany work with like dramatic violin music. I can see like in the top of like Frankenstein's Dracula Tower or whatever. Where <laughs> what was it we did the, the the very first episode, the original fairy fire uh Dancing lights, dragon. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, sure. You can always break yeah, that yeah. back up. There we go. We'll bring it back yeah. up. Do that. Yeah, give me back. an Arcana check. Oh no. I or can do actually, that. in your case, probably a. Uh, oh, she got uh, an extra twenty. Natural so. twenty. All right, never mind. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> oh, I'm supporting. Best special effects light to go with the story. I I didn't get it. I didn't get it, but I got exactly a twenty-two like you did. So yeah, you're all no, good. I want to hero point that. 
It's the last one. I want to use them. <laughs> no, but got worse. The curse still stays. I want to use my other does. one. Hold up. I'm using them all, boys. Wow, I only got like one better. That's exactly how this entire you, campaign went. You broke the rules to get one extra point. Yep. <laughs> Hope you're happy. But Rourke also got a 31 on that performance. Yes, I got a 31 on that performance the for dancing yeah, on... and, and telling a story that of the of our travails <laughs> through the nope. through the dark the dark lands. Very good. You I'll you you regale everyone here with your the tale of your journey. From dealing with dancing deep gnomes to Durgar imprisonment to fighting in the arena to dealing with cultists to traveling to the Bogards, perhaps leaving out their deep dark secret <laughs> to yeah for now fighting off cloakers and the horrible creature at the heart of their lands to making a deal with the orcs and finally facing off against the mother and her minions. The this assembled play, crowd um, kind of goes wild. They, they really enjoy the story. You did a very good job. This play takes 90 hours to tell. Yeah, it does. It takes it takes <laughs> 30 sessions, roughly 30. three hours long each to tell. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, at the end of it, good, uh, good King uh, Brightcrown uh, makes his way up to the stage, and he's still got his dumb crown on. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, we'll be signing autographs afterwards uh, in the back. Oh, it's oh, you, King Bright Crown. You're, you're yeah, me. you also wait in the back. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you go to the very back of the line. Oh, that's right. He's drawn all over as well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's got to have his crown and signature goatee and stuff and glasses. That's right. Yeah, no, it's fair. Um, uh, Bright Crown comes up to you and uh, he, he looks to all of you and goes, well, you've certainly earned your pay. <laughs> yeah, and more. Oh. I think we could probably arrange a bonus, especially considering how lucrative this trade deal is going to be. I hope so. Right, Crown. How Are do you, you figure it out? Pay us in pumpkin pieces. Pumpkin pie, lad. You know, you guys keep talking about pie. That sounds gross to me. Who would want to eat pumpkin in a pie? I grab, yeah. I grab him by his like cuff or like his neck, like collar <laughs> or whatever. Lift him up, going. I better get pumpkin pie, or I am going to fireball your entire state to the ground. Uh, all right, all right. You'll get, you'll get pumpkin pie. Sorry, <laughs> he's a little bit hangry after the last performance. Fine, fine. I drop him. I, I anticipated you might want pumpkin so i brought some i'll i'll have a pumpkin pie made okay good um he's like but i i, I do want to say thanks i i know this 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 task wasn't easy and i kind of roped you into it with that contract but uh you did good the uh, word for it so mm -hmm. uh if and? you want i've got uh you know the, the people up above would love another show so if you if you want i got another contract for you uh you paying no, 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 sure. no, 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 well, no. I think we'll be drawing up the contract this time. No need yeah. to read it. Just sign it. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, is there something Me and the dog say no. Me and Russell say no. There's a strange, mysterious forest nearby that I need someone to explore. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. It, 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 does it have a turnip farm that I need to avoid? <laughs> no, it, no, there's it's no a... turnips, but uh, there are strange ghosts. <laughs> yeah, at least it's above ground. That is true. We could at least take a wander through there next without a contract. But we can we can discuss all that later. But uh, but congratulations. No, seriously, you've you've done great. <laughs> um, the uh, the Goblin King returns to his seat, uh, leaving you all uh, to finish out your performance. And uh, as the crowd kind of uh, winds itself down, you find yourself. Uh, being able to go to the, uh, you know, the kind of back room and enjoy a drink. Snelk comes and serves you up a, uh, you know, hearty uh, uh, meal, mostly of mushrooms and bugs. Uh, but Bright Crown brought a few special things um, from the surface, including some venison, uh, which uh, Snelk has roasted up in your honor. <clears throat> so... He's actually made a halfway decent meal for once. <laughs> Excellent. 
And uh, as the, the group of you are left to uh, revel and celebrate by yourself, he comes by and says, the goblin wanted me to give you this pumpkin pie. And it's a pumpkin with a pie inside of it. <laughs> I'm infuriated. But what kind I'm delighted. of pie? It's so whimsical. It's a mushroom pie, and it's just oh, mushroom so it's stuffed inside that. Savory like, pie. Yeah, it's savory. <laughs> I, uh, I was reading over dinner. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna cut it up and serve it. It's like this is a pie filled with wonder and misinformation. <laughs> it's gonna be delicious. <laughs> I so, um. Sorry, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, the uh, the Bravos are able to uh, finally sit down and reflect upon their experiences and uh, consider their future. At least that is how the tale ends. In fact, the four of you are standing on a stage in Absalom, having just performed your tale, telling the story of the Band of Bravos and the Eternal Vault and the Elon core and the dragon to a packed house here in the theater district of Absalom to roaring applause. You finish off your performance and step off stage. As the curtain falls, the band of Bravos head out for yet another adventure. But that is a tale for another day. I want to thank you all for watching. This stream has been a blast. Um, I have one little special treat for you because we are not going to be playing the 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 any any further games with this particular story. So I wanted to show you the entire final map um, here of the Eternal Vault. This is all of it. This is everything I had drawn uh, in those first weeks, many 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 months ago. That you have now finally explored all of. Oh yeah, you know what? I just missed that. Thanks for pointing that out, James. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Here, All right side talk, gone. I'll, I'll finish it up. That that, that cave actually <laughs> goes up to the uh, Cloaker Caves. I have that. I apparently forgot to turn it on. <laughs> the big square so, room. So I wanted to give you all a, a glimpse <laughs> of of what the final map looked like, including the Earthen Throne and uh, and everything it contained, the Orc territories that you finally get a chance to visit. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's what we have, uh, here for the stream today, everybody. I knew this one might uh, wrap up a little early just cause, well, you know, when the story comes to a close, the story comes to a close. So I do want to thank you all for watching before we get going here today. Uh, I think, you know, we'll do what we always do, which is we will uh, go ahead and toss it around the horn for everybody to tell you, uh, where you can find out more about them and what they've got going on on the internet. We'll start with you, James, one last time. Hello, I'm James Jacobs, creative director for Pathfinder. You mm -hmm. can ask me whatever questions come to mind at the Paizo uh, forums. And uh, Jason, I think it's now safe to say that I was expecting a rock to pop out of those uh, dragon bones. <laughs> you know, you were the right level for me to do it. <laughs> I know, the whole time I was like, Vrock. Mm, that's actually about right for a group of six level characters. I better not say anything. <laughs> anyway, thanks no for running the game, Jason. That was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it's, it. It's interesting that like trying to like see where you're going and figure out what sort of this, like, that's not right. That's not, no, no, you had to figure it out from the start. So <laughs> I knew of everyone at the table, James, I knew you of all players knew, or at least had a decent idea of where I was heading. <laughs> Marissa. Oh my gosh, it is my turn. I was like reveling for a moment and oh, being no, emotional, you're all good. I guess. We're uh, in a hey, lazy kind of end here. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I'm Marissa Marie. I'm Paizo's web content manager. I uh, played Alana Thistlefoot. And actually in January, I am going to bring her back one more time to go hang out with a different band. Uh, I'm going to go hang out with the band of Badgers in January on the 28th. Uh, you can find me on all of the internet, on the Paisa forums, and all the social media at Marissa Marie, M-A-R-Y-S-S-A-M-A-R-I. Marissa, it has been a pleasure. Thank you very much for playing. It has genuinely been a lot of fun. I, I hope you have enjoyed it as well. Thank you for including me. <clears throat> this has been fantastic. <clears throat> Uh, I guess I'll go. Uh, hi, yeah, folks. I'm Jason Keeley, Starfinder developer. Um, and I was Rourke Thunderbird, the Tengu swashbuckler. 
Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Herz Weston, H-E-R-Z-W-E-S-T-E-N. And I hope that everyone out there has a good, uh, you know, w- winter holidays, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve time. Jason, you being you, part yes. of this game is part of why I said it with Bright Crown. <laughs> <laughs> so I could meet him once again. I'm like, yeah, oh, so I don't you, trust this guy for some reason. I knew you had had so much fun with him in Oblivion <laughs> I, that I, I wanted you to have more fun with him. <laughs> so much fun. You can hear the air quotes. I could taste the fun. <laughs> taste, mm, taste the, the rainbow. Fun. <clears throat> so much joyous wonder. I am Peyton Smith. I am uh, I'm the social media producer here at Paizo. And I have been playing Ron Barnes, the illustrious, super loud, super obnoxious wizard and everything. If you want to know all the stuff that I do, just simply look me up at Zoran the Bear, Z-O-R-A-N-T-H-E-B-E-A-R. Just Google it up and you'll find all the stuff about it. And uh, and thank you, Mr. Bowman, for running such a fantastic campaign. It's the most fun I've ever had with Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And you're very much a hot, you'll be one of the major highlights along with all of you of my experience with the game. Well, Peyton, you also deserve a huge amount of kudos. Peyton Smith has also been running the stream. Like, I don't broadcast. I just do my thing and run the game. Peyton is actually the one managing the music and the the hero points and the villain points and the stream itself. I know how much work that takes, Peyton. I know it is not easy to focus on that and playing the game simultaneously. And you've done a fantastic job, Peyton. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yay. I I like the echoes. Yay. Yeah, especially oh, yeah. the voice echoes. Those are nice. <laughs> All right, everybody. Buckers, buckers. <laughs> Would you like me to check the book one last time? One more time. One last time. Text book. Text the book. <laughs> I don't even have one nearby. All right. Uh, so, uh, hey there, everybody. I am Jason Bullman. I have been your uh, game master and storyteller for uh, this amazing journey. You can, of course, find me on all the various social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitch by going to their platform backslash Jason Bullman. That's J-A-S-O-N-B-U-L-M-A-H-N. I don't know what the next year holds yet. We're still trying to figure out uh, what uh, streaming uh, fun we have in store for you next year. I can guarantee you that I will be back doing something. I'm just trying to figure out exactly what that's going to be. This year has thrown a lot of curveballs our way. This show was kind of made as an emergency, like, well, we're all in lockdown. Uh, We got to do something. And uh, it's been a lot of fun bringing this together and kind of throwing it together incredibly rapidly. The entire story here and the, the basic plot arc was written nine months ago when all of this got started. And to see it kind of fully come to fruition has been a true joy And uh, that joy has been made all the easier by all of you watching at home, cheering us on, enjoying the shows on YouTube, and by all of my amazing players. They really have done a fantastic job. I have enjoyed watching their characters grow and develop uh, from first level neophyte, uh, you know, performers into mighty adventurers capable of taking down a skeletal dragon. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed it too. Thank you all for watching, everybody. We will see you sometime in the new year doing some more fun streaming shows. But until then, good gaming, good adventuring, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you next time. All right, everyone say Bye. goodbye. So long, everyone. Bye. Please be safe. <laughs> Bye. Can we stay level wonderful. Up? Can we, can we... No, you don't One level up. Level. Oh, <laughs> come on. There's, there's no more levels. Just say we're level 10, man. Fine, like, you we just have a level. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! And the game's over. All right. Aww. See you see you later, everyone. It's been an absolute blast. Bye, Please everybody. Please be safe. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.